along the shores of Rodanthe, houses that once stood far from the ocean are now at risk of collapse, victims of relentless coastal erosion. As we look at what's going on in, in Rodanthe, we have to understand that there have been other houses previously that have fallen there. Uh, most of these houses are older houses built in the 70s and 80s. And when those houses were built, there was a big wide beach there, and so there wasn't any risk. Many of them that we've seen collapse in the last four years, at one point in time, were four to five rows back from the ocean front or even the dune line. The beach in Rodanthe, while it was eroding, it was relatively stable and it was wide. It isn't until recent years that the erosion rate there seemed to have increased rapidly. And with that rapidly increasing erosion rate, we began to lose these houses. Rodanthe faces some of the highest erosion rates in the region, with the shoreline retreating by over 10 feet annually in some areas. While erosion has always been a challenge, the rate of change has accelerated in recent years. There's no question that houses have collapsed historically in the Outer Banks. Usually those collapses were associated with a large storm. Of the 10 houses that have collapsed in the last four years, none of those collapses were associated with a direct impact from a hurricane or tropical storm or even a nor'easter. This crisis isn't just about homes. Highway 12, the lifeline for the southern outer banks, is also at risk. If these houses are, are not protected, then that means Highway 12 is not protected too. And so we're really concerned how do we protect Highway 12 because that's our artery to get to all the villages on the southern outer banks. Beach nourishment has been used successfully for the communities on the northern beaches, from Duck through Nags Head. And many homeowners ask why Rodanthe hasn't received a project. Of course, the first thing that we looked at was beach nourishment. And we need to start now uh, to try to figure that out. Well, as we looked at the fund uh, and we had our engineers go look at it, the cost three years ago to do that was roughly $40 million. Uh, at that time, the fund didn't have $40 million, and it doesn't have $40 million now. We continue to work with our federal and state government officials to try to find dollars to do that. We either through appropriations, through grant programs, uh, whatever is out there available to us to augment our beach nourishment fund so that we could do a nourishment project. We went to Congressman Murphy uh, to try to see if he could help us find funds. That's still an effort that's underway and we'll see what happens with that. We've been through a grant cycle to try to get grants to do that. We weren't successful with that. Uh, and the goal to augment the funds that we already have in order to get enough money to do a project there, again, to protect Highway 12 and then ancillary to protect those houses that are there. Some homeowners feel their only option is to leave their homes to collapse in order to collect flood insurance payouts. But these collapses leave behind dangerous debris, littering up to 20 miles of beaches and posing serious safety risks. When we actually have a catastrophic collapse of the house, those impacts are magnified tremendously. We can have debris on the beach that is so thick that in some areas it's difficult to walk. Much of that debris uh, is ridden with nails and therefore it, it poses a public safety issue. So it's really important for the owner of the house to themselves or with their contractor start cleaning up as soon as possible. We have found in many cases we've had to supplement that cleanup to try to mitigate the impact to the visitors, habitats and resources of the park. One promising approach has been buyouts and removals. The National Park Service began a pilot program, which works with willing sellers to purchase and demolish at-risk houses, restoring the beach to its natural state. We were able to acquire those structures and demolish them and completely restore the beach area approximately a year ago. And now when you go out to those locations, you have no idea there was ever a house there. There's a beautiful, pristine, open beach, and all of the impacts that were occurring there before have been eliminated. The fight to save Rodanthe's coastline involves collaboration between local, state, and federal agencies. The threatened oceanfront structures interagency working group has explored solutions from stricter building regulations to relocating homes, but challenges remain. To manage a problem, there's really only two options other than nourishment, and that is you either find a way to remove the houses or find a way to 
move the houses to some other location. The issue with relocating the houses is there's not very many places that they can do it. And the cost to remove them to lots that may be available is more expensive than what an owner can afford to do and they can't get their return on their money. From the owner's perspective, they've got flood insurance that'll pay them $250,000. If the house falls in, it costs them about thirty dollars to $50,000 to clean up the mess and so there's $200,000 they put in their pocket, then they have no incentive to remove that house. In Rodanthe alone, as many as 20 houses face imminent collapse within the next two years. While grant applications and federal funding efforts continue, time is of the essence. The granting folks in Raleigh acknowledge that that's a, a good reason, acknowledge that we have good chances, but again, we have to go through the process and that's not a short-term solution. The Rodanthe erosion crisis is a complex issue with no easy solutions. But through collaboration, innovation, and perseverance, there is hope. We're going to continue to have threatened oceanfront structures in the Outer Banks. However, as a result of the threatened oceanfront structures working group, as a result of our close working relationship with Dare County in the state of North Carolina and many other nonprofit partners, I'm confident that we will slowly over time develop more tools in the toolbox to better manage threatened oceanfront structures in the Outer Banks. For more information, please visit darenc.gov slash rodanthierosion.